there. Um, there's an interesting record here which is rather difficult to explain so I really must not talk too much. Um, it was made in London, we think, or I think, in December, about December 1914 and um, it appears here on this very rare British label called Silvertone uh, and it's called Mon, uh, Mon Ami which was written by a guy called um, Robert Monard although there's no composer credit on the label but I checked it up on uh, Google and uh, there's even a piano copy in a museum in Australia if you want to look at it or ask for a copy and it was published in 1914 by the publishers J.H. Larway and there's their uh, copyright stamp there, J.H. Larway. Um, so why is this record interesting? Well it's a salon piece uh, done in the spirit of the Belle Epoque, you know that period, this sort of Edwardian period that carried on uh, until that those dreadful time of August 1914 when the Great War broke out and after 1918 things were never the same. So here's the label and um, one of the interesting points about it is that there are some patent numbers above the centre hole uh, and these are patent numbers which are the Pettit and Prescott pat patents of 1901. 1, 2, 19, 2, 3, 4, regarding double-sided records, uh, which were old hat by 1914, but I suppose whoever uh, may have had the silver tone records made thought it looked impressive, which it certainly does. Um, <clears throat> but uh, this disc has nothing in the wax or under the label by way of master number, so it's difficult to know where it comes from. The other side of the record is... Uh, master number um, was recorded, oh I haven't got the master number, but it was recorded, it's the glow worm and it was recorded by the Beaker, or perhaps Baker would be better pronunciation, Baker London Orchestra under Julian Jones in November 1909. But this side is devoid of any um, number either in the wax or under the label, but I think I've traced it to a December 1914 London recording um, and that was the year that this uh, tune was published and as I say it bears the correct copyright stamp for the publisher so uh, here we have an example of a German based company trading in England um, after the Great War with nom principally with Germany had broken out um, but the Baker uh, company which was a subsidiary of Lindstrom already um, was a British company with British directors uh, and so there was no reason to interfere with it. So it carried on business up until about 1916. And at that point it was uh, taken, it was closed down and confiscated by the British government because it was in effect uh, an enemy company. And its masters were made available um, in various means to other companies and I think that's how this particular Beaker Master uh, comes to be on this very rare and fugitive um, label Silver Tone which is very rare and um, so that, that's it really uh, but what does the music sound like? Well uh, the music uh, sounds exactly like what one would expect from a, uh, a salon group of that time um, you know they are playing with absolute sincerity and they are as it were speaking to us or playing to us over an impassable gulf uh, we're travelling back in time which is why so many of us are interested in, in old recordings and um, that, that they may not be the best musicians but they're playing with this sincerity and saying uh, you know this music is beautiful we may not be playing it very well but the music is beautiful and I, I, I don't think you could get a better example well it's just a personal favourite of mine and I it's dangerous to play 
your favourite records um, in case somebody people don't like them. But uh, I but I, I must say I do like this and that's much more than enough from me. Listen to these London studio musicians in December 1914 playing this uh, beautiful piece. <laughs> 